So, today we're going pallet hunting. We're going to find out how much time it takes, what's involved, how much effort it is, what sort of material you can expect to get from it all, but most importantly, we'll find out is it all worth it. Let's get to it. <laughs> First up, we're going to need to find ourselves some pallets. There's no magic secret to pallet hunting, however there are some basic tips that will keep you in good stead. The first tip is to go hunting often. Some places get rid of good pallets more frequently, so drive past these as often as you can. If you see pallets stacked up in the yard of a factory, just go and ask if they're throwing them out. Otherwise, if they're on the nature strip, they're generally fair game. The biggest rule though, is always leave things neat and tidy after you finish salvaging. A little respect goes a long way. Ooh, a piece of candy. We also need to stay away from the blue and red pallets, as these are the property of Chep and Loskin. Now, I don't have the luxury of being able to throw pallets in the back of a ute, so I break down the full-size pallets on the side of the road using a pallet buster and a reciprocating saw. I like to cut the end runners off as it's far quicker and also saves splitting many of the boards. The small amount of length you lose is worth it, believe me. You can also get demo blades for the saw, which won't mind going straight through the nails. It's always worth looking through these kinds of piles. I always seem to find a few skids with some real amazing colours tucked away. I am able to get the skids or small pallets in my boot. These can be a bit more fiddly to break down, so I'll bring these home and spend the time taking out my frustrations on them there.
Now, while you're breaking down pallets, you'll inevitably come across some broken nails. The easiest way to remove these is to use locking long nose pliers to clamp down on the nail and use a hammer or pry bar to lever it out. You can also get a nail remover for a compressor if you want to save some time and energy. Or, if you're like me, you can just use some elbow grease and a totally healthy amount of anger. That little metal detector off Amazon saves me every time, honestly. Just get one. Now it's time to check our table saw square and put a straight edge on all our boards using our poor man's jointer jig. Next we'll run all the boards through the planer to give us nice flat edges for the glue up. This is probably one of my favourite bits as we start to uncover the wood grain. Now that we've had our visit from our old mate the magpie, we can cut all these boards down to 25mm strips and glue them up into some nice pallet slabs. Back in the old days, the telephone was something of an oddity, to say the least. You'd pick up this receiver to see that the line was clear. Then you'd hang up and ring with this crank. 
Pick it up again and tell the operator what number you want. So what did we end up with after all that? These beautiful palette blocks that I'm going to steal inspiration from Jesper makes and create a palette block coffee table when I get a few more. If you haven't seen Jesper, seriously go check him out, I'll link below. He's one of the main reasons why I started on this journey. We also got some good pine boards and some runners that we'll use for framing our furniture pieces. Some good particle board that we'll use for the base of our drawers and our future palette workbench. And not one but five beautiful palette slabs that we can use. So, was it worth the time and effort? For sure.